some of the basic concepts of graphing. In order to do this, let's start with an example. Zelda planted a small tree. She jotted down the height of the tree for the first four months. Provide a graph of this situation. Here we have the table of values that Zelda recorded, with the number of days on the left and the height of the tree on the right. We now want to represent this table in a graph. Here are the things you need to know when you want to graph a table of values. First, we need to decide which of the variables is the independent variable and which variable is the dependent variable. It's easy to answer this by asking yourself, which variable depends on the other variable? So by looking at our two headings on the table, do the number of days depend on how high the tree is, or does the tree's height depend on how many days it's been planted? That second sentence sounds more reasonable. So the tree height is our dependent variable, and the number of days is the independent variable. When we graph, the independent variable always goes on the x-axis, and the dependent variable always goes on the y-axis. Next, we need to determine an appropriate scale to put on each axis. Let's look at the range of numbers for each variable. For the number of days, the range of numbers goes from 0 to 120. We can count 11 different grid lines that go along the x-axis. So to decide an appropriate scale, we want to find a number that is able to fit the entire range of the number of days. One block every 10 days might seem like a reasonable scale. However, because we only have 11 grid lines, we won't be able to represent 120 days on the graph. So we need to choose a different scale. For example, we can choose a different scale where every block represents 15 days, or every two blocks represents 30 days. And here's how we can label it. Now let's consider the appropriate scale for the y-axis, or the total height. Our range of numbers for the y variable go from 50 all the way to 68. And since we have nine grid lines to work with going up the y-axis, we could safely say that our scale should go up by tens, just like this. Notice how I only labeled every other grid line. It's not necessary for you to label every single grid line if you don't need to. Now that we have chosen which variable goes on each axis and a proper scale, there's one more label we need to add to the axis lines themselves. Each variable needs to be represented by its own letter. The number of days could be represented by the letter N, and the tree height could be represented by the letter H. These variable letters will get added to the end lines of each axis like so. That looks perfect. Now we need to transfer the data over from the table onto the graph. Remember when reading points on a graph, we always read the x variable first, then the y variable. Except in this case, we don't have x and y as our variables, but we have n and h. So another way to think of it is to always read the independent variable first, then the dependent variable. Our first point is the point 0, 50. We would follow 0 around the n-axis, and then up to 50 on the h-axis, which would put a point right here. Our next point is the point 30, 56. So that's 30 along the n-axis, 56 along the h-axis, which would put us around here. You'll need to do your best to guess where that goes on the h-axis because it's in between grid lines. Here's how the rest of the points would get plotted on the graph. Looking at the results, we can see that these dots all form a pattern that looks very close to a line. If we notice this, we could call this a linear relationship. And we can add on to this graph a line of best fit. A line of best fit is a line that you think connects the dots the best. It doesn't necessarily have to go through all the dots, but it should be as close to all of them as possible. Let's draw a line of best fit now. 
you can see that our line of best fit connects through most of the dots, but doesn't quite connect perfectly through all of them. So although we would consider our relationship to be linear, it's not perfect. We would say, though, that this graph has an upward trend. That's to say that our values on the y-axis are increasing as we go from left to right on the x-axis, or our graph is going upwards from left to right. We could also have a graph that would have a downward trend, which would be the opposite. This graph is also an example of a partial variation. A partial variation is a linear graph where our first point isn't at 0, 0. In this case, our first point is up the h-axis at 50, or 0, 50. An example of a direct variation graph could look like this. This line has what we call its initial value at 0, 0, where the graph that represents our line has an initial value at 0, 50. Let's discuss one more thing. The points on our graph are kind of squished between the values of 50 and 68. It might be easier if this was more spread out, or if we zoomed in a bit more on the graph. We can do this by changing the scale, but it may force us to have to not have the beginning of our h-axis start at the value of 0. Look at how I can change the scale of the graph just like so. I have adjusted the h-axis so that we have a zoomed in look at our graph. Notice how the line of best fit now looks a lot steeper than it did before. Our scale has changed as well. Every two blocks now represents five units. But did you also see that we don't start at zero? The first number there you see is 50. And there's this weird squiggly line. We call that a break. We put a break into a scale when we don't start right at zero, or if the first block from the x-axis to our first scale point does not match the scale that the rest of the axis uses. The benefits to our graph looking like this is that it's easier for us to interpolate other results. Interpolation is when we find a point on a graph that we aren't necessarily given in our table but we use our line of best fit to predict what it could be. For instance, what if we were asked to figure out how many days we think it would take this tree to reach a height of 62 and a half centimeters? 62 and a half centimeters is right here on the scale of our h axis. So we line up that with our line of best fit and we reach this point right here, which is approximately 75 days. Graphs can also be used to predict things that fall outside of our range or beyond where our points are. So if we continued up the line, we could predict things by extrapolating. So there you have it, the basics of graphing. We talked about which variable is the independent and dependent variable, how to create scale, what direct and partial variation is, plotting points on our graph, and then creating a line of best fit. We saw whether or not our graph had an upward or downward trend, adjusted a scale that used a break, and then used interpolation and extrapolation to predict other points. Now you can use all of these skills as we move forward in the world of graphing. Ooh.